Welcome everyone to another RGL cast. My name is Jared and I'm here with Space to bring you guys RGL Invite 6 of Season 10, Week 1B, Freyotech vs. Mal. This is the first week and we're already really getting into a big one here between these two teams and I think this is one that uh, people have been really waiting for once they kind of heard how things were shaking down in the offseason space. Yeah, so we're going to have a lot to talk about here with the offseason, speaking of which. But yeah, I'm excited to see uh, Freyotech for the first time this season or a Neo Freyotech, New Freyotech, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, we're going to have to talk a, a bit about the rosters because, I mean, I think most people at this point are probably, like, even though we're only in week one, like they're kind of in the know about what's happened to a degree. There's maybe some people that, you know, haven't really paid attention to the off season, so it's uh it's probably important to to go over the rosters and let everyone know what's going on. Uh why don't you go ahead and start with the, the Mal roster and I'll give some of the relevant for you tech lore. Alright, so for Mal X we have Shibu and Scratch on Scout, Trip Y and Aim on Soldier, Psy on Demo, and Dank on Medic. Yeah, those are all pretty much familiar names at this point. Scratch being the newest, I'm pretty sure. I think this is the second invite season. Previously played with, uh, I think, Cat Girl Cafe last season. So it is uh, now on Mal. But for the side of Freya Tech, uh, you're going to have an interesting uh, display of events when with the dissolve and then rebuild from Scratch of Freya Tech. Banny is the constant here, but the entire new roster that he has uh, crafted around himself. For, for those that may not... I mean, you probably see some names that are familiar, but for anyone who who's unfamiliar. You have Ether and Yum Yum on uh, Demo and Scout, re respectively. They just played uh, LAN for, uh, for Angie last season and, and got fourth. That was their actual first uh, playoff debut, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then you have Sin and Hubba, who actually just played the grand finals of Advance last season. Sin is not new to invite. He got fourth with GCI in season six. Hubba, however, this is his invite debut on Medic. And they played against Donovan in that grand final, uh, who is moving up from a small advanced tenure. But this is also not his first appearance either. He uh, played with 1738 and got eighth place in season eight. So it's a quite a, a large uh, arrangement of like where these players are coming from. But uh, well, I guess not really. If you think about it, from they're all from advanced grand finals, but. Their, their background on their experience and stuff, there's a, a wide variety to it. So it's a really interesting group. And uh, unless you've been like keeping a close tab on exactly how their scrims have been going day by day, I mean, you could really have no idea what to expect them, to be honest, which I think makes things even more exciting, realistically. Yeah, you can never know, because uh, I think for an early team, you know, a new team, you're going to have a lot of, you know, kinks to work out you're gonna have a lot of just things to work out as the season goes on and early on you know we might see some struggling out of the gate and but at the same time they also could be a match team you never know the, the rare and famed match team where they kind of beef their scrims and then show up to the match and just play well and you always do have the banny factor you always have the banny halftime talk factor so i'm really curious to see how they're gonna you know perform in this match i'm sure we all are but i think the team we see at the end of the season might not be the same team we see today in terms of Maybe in terms of player, but in terms of how they play, it could be vastly different. Oh, sure. We definitely glossed over it as we were. We tried to kill tons and tons of time yesterday, like 40 minute gap. But we, one, thing, one of the things we talked about is how it's really interesting in the earlier uh, seasons, or it's not earlier seasons, but earlier part of the season, because one way you could think about things is like, oh, this other team, like we can exploit them. They don't have their stuff together, you know. But then you look at yourself and like, wait, we don't have our stuff together either. We're also a new team. So it's kind of, uh, you know, the way that you see a team play in the beginning might not be the way you see them play in the end because teams are going to improve at different rates uh, depending on the players and play style and things of that nature. There's probably a small edge for the side of Mal because even though the Mal roster changes every time they have a Mal roster, there's a mix of players that are very much familiar with each other. They're projectiles. Even if, yeah, even if sometimes the, the roles get swapped up a little bit. For the, for the side of Freya Tech, this is a, a large group of players that they only have small amounts of connections here and there in terms of synergy. You know, Sin, like we just said, Sin and Hubba just played together. Uh, Ether and uh, Yum Yum just played together just for playoffs. But, I mean, that's about it. Ever, everywhere else has just been pugs. And then the short offseason trying to make sure that everything's, you know, right as rain. But Oh, you know, for beginning of the season, I think anything is really possible. So, like we said, with both these teams being new-ish, uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly how things are going to go down. Definitely, I uh, 
I wonder how Danny's gonna feel in all this. You know, it's so weird seeing Danny without Habib or just Danny with at least like one or two of the traditional pro players. It's I I feel like it's I don't know I don't know if I should use the term new era, but it definitely feels like that. Where it I don't remember the exact season number. You probably remember better than I do, but. There was some season where Freo or Danny's team died, so we got a bunch of new and upcoming players and strawberry they, they... mangoes in season twenty. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite the interesting season where, yeah, Froyo dissolved after or no, it was season twenty one because they lost season twenty to TSU. Yeah, that's so they all like Ancient a lot of them, through history. Here. A lot of them left, and the team died, and then Manny didn't. Um, he was more looking for a team rather than trying to build a team. He joined a pre-existing team, Strawberry Mangoes. They got fifth that season and barely missed playoffs. And, you know, vamped things up. And they got first the season after, Brandon as Freya Tech. Um, they made some roster changes along the way when they realized they had some issues. They, I know Free Stay got shuffled around. He was on Medic at the beginning. Corsa was on the team, and then he got cut and then got replaced and something like that. But. Uh, I don't know if we're actually going to see that this season. I think it kind of depends. It always depends on performance as well as like if, if you replaced anyone at all because you realized there was like issues with cohesion and things like that. Like we're, what player pool are you even selecting from in terms of free agents? But, uh, you know, I, I guess we'll, that's a, a story for a later date. And as we, uh, we can take a look at the map bands here that are on the screen now. And we're going to see some deja vu from yesterday as a, uh, Sunshine is going to be once again the map, and it's proven to be a very popular map for week one, as the teams are pretty familiar with. So I can only imagine it's a probably a map that was played a decent amount on the off season. The, the teams coincidentally were like, "Yeah, this is fine. Don't touch it. Don't, we don't need to ban it. It's whatever." It's kind of funny to me the uh, the same first two bans as yesterday, where we saw yesterday we saw um, Catcall Cafe. I believe they first banned uh, Bagel and then Product, the two uh, cough maps. And then today, it's Freyo Tech banning the two uh, cough maps. You know, they might have a similar theory going on. It's like, ah, oh, we're a new team. I don't know if we feel comfortable playing on cough. But I think it's odd because I can't remember the last time I've seen Freyo Tech actually ban product, which I think just goes to show even further how new of a team this is, like whole new team dynamics. You know, I feel like Bandy traditionally is very, very okay with playing a product and Beagle, but uh, not today. You know, yeah. it's early, too early in the season for King of the Hill. One thing that everyone has to keep in mind is now when you like call the team Freya Tech, it's no longer you know their play style and and what they've been about for seasons on end. It's literally it's literally just a brand. That kind of stuff has to get built on from this point. Like I'm sure uh, as time goes on, you know, Benny has an idea because he's going to be you know leading the team both in and out of game. He has an idea of how the game wants to be played, so he's going to try to mold the team in that aspect. But the, that takes time. You can't just do that in the off season. It's going to take throughout the entirety of the season as you go through all these different maps to um, you know, begin to form that. So there, there basically is no cemented Froyo Tech play style. And I That's think that, loop, that loops back to what we said at the beginning on how the fact that you, there's so much unanswered for that it makes things exciting because you really don't know how things are going to go. You, like, well, the best you can do is, like, I'll, I'll, say, I'll admit it myself. I got curious, and I went through the scrim logs every time they've ever played, and it's not definitive at all. These teams really, they've are, been up and down. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I didn't see a single night where like, oh, this team rolled them the whole night. Like, no, it was back and forth. Mm, and granted, okay. those are just scrims on arbitrary maps, so it's not necessarily going to be what is happening tonight on display, because uh, it's what all, all that matters is this one map in in this one instance. But it just goes to show that it's. Uh, I think a, a lot of the predictions, which we're gonna, about to go to now, is everyone's kind of you know putting in their two cents on what they think is going to happen. Everyone's just doing educated guesses, and that's really the best they can do. Yeah, it's again early in the season, so it's hard to say anything definitively. But I will say, uh, I do think in the end, Danny can get the team together, like you said. They he has to kind of mold his players into how he wants to play them. Another thing, Danny also has to do is he has to you know make sure to adapt to his new player space style. You know, again, he's not playing with Habib, who I feel like he's played with for one million years by this point. So there might also, might, also, might also have to be some adaption on Danny's end, you know, just, you know, new players, new skill sets, different skill sets. And, you know, the Fire roster went through a lot of, you know, I, I don't know what the turmoils are, but they, they, they always, you know, changes throughout the, se throughout the years. But it's only small changes, not huge Mm -hmm. changes like this when you make a small change all you gotta do is catch up the one person up to yeah. speed and everything else is like a well old machine that you don't have to worry about but now there's so many moving parts it's like all right i want to make sure that player a is able to do a certain thing and we can learn it properly oops oh player b screwed up okay player a can't learn because player b had to learn first so it's like you it's hard to 
it's hard to focus on certain things. You can't pigeonhole like, all right, today we're going to learn about doing this type of mid or that type of mid because excess things elsewhere just go wrong to prevent you from focusing on, on, uh, on things. So uh, it can be uh, difficult if you compare it to uh, like previous versions of Freya Tech, like adding in a new person and trying to make it work. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, but yeah, it goes back to it's, ju it's just a brand at this point. You got to get it built up. But now that we've had uh, everyone kind of say their two cents on what they think is going to happen here on Sunshine, we have a slight lean towards Mal, but Space, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? And uh, what, what do you think the score is going to be? I think that Mal has a lot of experience in terms of like all of their projectile play. All of their players on Mal seem pretty experienced to me, just off the top of my head. Maybe not all of them. Like, I would say Scratch is definitely one of the quote unquote newer players in Invite. I wouldn't consider them, you know, old blood by any means, but uh, they do have a fair amount of players. I think that if Mal, if they are as good on paper as I think they are, then I think Mal should be a bit favored here. But again, it's Freya Tech, and they have such an X factor, really, of like how well they're, they've meshed together that I wouldn't be surprised either way, but I definitely would like. I think the predictions are fair in that I'd give us the slight edge to Mal here. I don't know. You say that for you has an X factor, but Mal's name this season is literally Mal X. I don't <laughs> well, they know. Have, they, they have the counter X factor. Yeah, that's true. Even things out. Uh, two things come to mind when I think about predictions, like to try to conduct a score. Um, the first thing is, is uh, you know, this is it's a bit, um, un, it's slight. I don't think bias is the right word. Unfortunately for the side of Freya Tech, they've already got a match on display and that they played against Etchers and Took My Homies yesterday and almost lost that, which are full of players that I think they're, for the most part, have shown that like they're fine at mid-invite, but you don't want to almost lose to mid-invite to be like a really yeah. good playoff team, right? So that kind of worries me a bit um, for their consistency going into a, a, like a match versus plenty of players who've gotten fourth and third like season upon season. But the second thing I think about is like, there's two main things you kind of go off of. There's how good is a team's DM, and then how good is a team's, like, strategy and team play and things like that. Um, and regardless about team play, with both these teams be being, like, relatively new, I feel like on paper, Mal is going to have slightly better DM. So for Freya Tech to, like, win convincingly, they'd have to, like, very much outplay them. And with it being so early, I find it difficult for them to have a playbook, like, already made, that's not just Banny saying the team to do certain things at the heat of the moment and having it just work out flawlessly, which is, you know, that's, 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 a, that's a tough call. It makes me kind of lean towards like a five, three in mouse favor. But... I was thinking the same thing. I also do think though, that Danny probably picked up players that he feels have high DM potential and that, you know, he feels like he has players he can mold and that they have the DM that they can get by. And then once they get settled with the team, their DM, might get better just off of team coordination, if that makes sense. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know, I feel like he 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 picked players. Yeah, you know, I guess well, he picked who was available first, and he also picked players who he felt like had high potential down the line. You know, I think he might go into this expecting to maybe stumble early out of the gate because he's been playing long enough that he knows the long term game here. As long as his team makes playoff and he's ready for playoffs, I feel like that's all he's really going to care about. The issue is just you know getting to that point. You know, with your sanity intact. Yeah, I think it's totally like reasonable to think that in the second time these two teams play and what I assume is somewhere around week five, you could definitely see a totally different match. And that's me yeah. saying that now so that it doesn't seem like I'm trying to say anything after the match is over. That I think um, both these teams' ability to adapt and change over the course of like a month is probably much different. I feel like yeah, like you said, Banny probably picked up players that are going to be able to mold to the way he wants to play, and that's probably going to benefit them more in the long run rather than Mal to a slight degree. But the question is, is you know, are you going to have to fight like through it some sort of deficit from failing to meet your win quota in the beginning half of the season? Because it doesn't. At the end of the day, one important thing to remember that we even talk about on a micro level when we talk about like half times and things like that. It's like cool and all if you're at the second half of your season and you're doing fine and you fixed all your issues and now you're great. Does not matter if you lost those two matches in like week one or two that you should not have lost in the, under any circumstances. And that's yeah. why teams like will change and like die even and things like that. It's because, oh, they finally got their stuff together, but it's too late. They're, they've late, like dug their grave already. So, yeah. I feel like we have, you know, it makes sense for you for it is the big topic of discussion, but it, 
Also, I feel like we're, we're kind of sleeping on Mel in terms of, I feel like Mel this season, they have a very good roster on paper and they have a very good potential this season. So I, I think some make some noise in the upper echelons of the playoff brackets, even if you know things go their way. Yeah, I think for the most part, both these teams are probably, people would kind of assume, like, oh yeah, they'll make playoffs, that's fine. But I think the big question is, is besides the seed, is who's going to be under threat, like under the fire to make sure that they don't lose to a team like Dynasty or Insect Gang or anything like that, you know? Cause yeah, the, even the if you're looking, teams. yeah, because even if you're looking like, you know, you're probably going to be a, a team that is going to be fine for playoffs. You want to make sure that those uh those upsets don't happen if you're one of them. You don't want to be on the edge. Rather be third than fourth. Yeah. Also, is it just I feel I think Freo has more anime avatars than my anime list, which is kind of distressing. Uh, I feel like some false advertising here. I mean. I can just call them both my anime list. True. <laughs> my my anime list Froyo and my anime list X. I very critically forgot to update my casting essentials, so these tags are not changing. Uh oh. The well, good I, news uh... is, is though, I don't think we're starting quite yet. Though I think we we had, had to change servers for a moment, and now teams are are like filing in and things like that. So it's gonna be a bit. But I think we're actually getting everyone in the server now, so it shouldn't be too. Yeah, much we longer. have. Uh, we do have all six. Uh, on that note, I actually think about the players here. One thing I think is a new right, dynamic, right. maybe, is that looking at the players, I think I might expect to see a little more off-classing out of Froyo. I know both Froyo soldiers are pretty good at off-classing. Uh, I know Donovan in particular is a established off-class slash memer, so I definitely would expect to maybe see that out of him. Uh, I, I feel like Froyo usually hasn't had that in the past, although maybe Danny put a clamp down on it. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I don't... I feel like the only serious off class that we'll see is from Freya is maybe Yum Yum. I, I like it's obviously possible, but I don't think it's going to be like the same way where a team has like a literal sniper main on their team that just swaps yeah. whenever they feel like it, right? Like their soldiers can will, will do it. Like we'll see Spy or something like that, or Sniper. Or I, did, I, I wouldn't be surprised not... if we saw Donovan Spy at some point. It, it would. I, I would. Yeah. I would bet the money on Donovan Spy rather than lack of Donovan Spy. And speaking of Spy on the side of a. Uh, uh, Mal, you know how much Shamu loves Spy. He goes True. Spy tons, and t sometimes to his own detriment, where to the point where you're playing against him, and uh, they'll actually say in comms, "Watch out for Shamu Spy." <laughs> but yeah, hey, some, some you players, you just he, have that. You just like get that like tingle, and you're just like, "Hmm, I sense a spy." The silver lining is if you've gotten to that point, you don't even have to go Spy, and you're already kind of winning the psychological warfare oh, battle. Definitely. Just, like, like, a... just don't just don't show yourself and kind of like hide until it's time to do things and you're going to have them like checking their back nonstop. But you'll do a solo sack and there'll be two people like turning around making sure they don't get backstabbed. Yeah, like Mooba. Mooba's another one of those players where it's just like Mooba's on soldier. And, you know, look, look out for spies. Man, just calculated hiding. Yeah. I mean, once you have that reputation, you can use it to your advantage. So I, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it, it can it can work out in your favor. It can also be a detriment. But uh, looks like we're actually starting. Ooh, okay, I think this is legit. We're not debated like last time. Last time we got a, uh, we got readied up three times because the config was not working. But this one is working. It's the five minute config. I think it's one half, and if it's uh stalemate, it's infinite round timer or something along those lines. We we played the wrong config last cast, so we didn't get to see it ourselves. But we Valley are getting up. to see the very first mid as both teams rolling up Valley, not tons of damage early on. You have a flank from Donovan coming out of Cafe right at the bat, popping. Sigh into the sky, and I didn't even see where Scraps are on the other side of the map. Got gonna be able to get Donovan. Before. <laughs> oh, but Sigh's gonna clean up by the side of Yum Yum. They've swapped sides, and there's some positional advantage on the side here. of Froyo. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of blocked him out attack. Yeah, Mal, Mal is caught in the reverse cafe. They're caught in the, the other team's cafe, which is not a great position to be in. And they're gonna be fighting Trip here, as Trip is also caught in. Mal gonna try to rotate, but they gotta watch out because Donovan is a spawner, and he's gonna get these forwards here. There's a lot of hurt players. Dang, he's trying to get out. He's trying to melee. Hubbard, can you oh get it? Oh my god. Hubbard is gonna die, but trip. Okay, they finally they finally cleaned up the kills, but they get Hubbard, which means no Uber ad on the side as Mal is gonna wipe, but that could have been they so much up, worse. They split up to all different doors. So the soldiers were at two other doors, and then uh and Dank just was walked alone and ran face first into Hubbard and got the medic trade, which is actually like that's probably the best scenario you can really hope for, even though your team kinda wiped, you know, that, that type of ring Trading around the Trading mid is so huge. Yeah. But it, it's Honestly, the classic, let's go left side and pass by their cafe and not really, like, be aware of it. And I got, Donovan got the freeze bomb of his life. It completely ruined size game plan to rotate. And then Scratch kind of got owned right off the bat as well, which didn't <laughs> help anything. Scratch didn't have a so. mid. He rolled out and just died. It, yeah, it so happens. Bo both those combined just 
completely locks them out. But those type of mistakes, we'll have to see if they're able to patch those up and or, or if it's going to not even come into play with a different mid. But we do have the last hold going on because both medics die. It's a bit of a stalemate as teams are just, just building before they go ahead and try to do anything. want to make sure you have the uber as a fail safe if things go wrong. Yeah, there's a tactical cone sentry on last, which you love to see. It's, you know, the, the cone provides some much needed cover. Uh, oh, very much so. Yeah, it's, plus you can hide stickies in there, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, dynamic things out of that cone. Think of which, look at that trap that uh, Sai has on the left side. Oh, it's kind of weird, but yeah, it was it's... like on the upper left, I guess, to prevent bombs. This is, I feel like they're very uh, passively holding that top left. It's just like Sai with a silly trap. Yeah, I feel like... I would expect it, this hole to be slightly different, like either Dank slightly more on the right or the gun more on the left. It feels like the left is a bit open, but the gun does die over on the right hand side. So I actually committed to the left and was unable to help the right side. So the spam got through, was able to make sure the gun falls. But Freo, they're trying to do something off it. The gun is back up, it's going to stall oh, Dominic, so he's not able to get to where he wants to go. And Zen dies as well. Ether, he actually fell Fanny's out of the doorway. In. Fanny's in to try to make sure Ether is able to survive and is able to save him at least for now. Shamu on the chase to see if he can find this demon. He's in through water. The rest hey, of the team's force. actually just bombing in a lobby, able to get this force. Shamu trying to get out. He's no longer needed, but he is going to chase down by the side of Fanny. Able to clean up two from that. Very long spawns as well from the side of Man and Mila. So they do have Uber to work with, but at what cost? If that, that soldier dies, that aim dies, it's huge. It doesn't take crater damage. Tank is going to have to pop, but there's absolutely no kills going their way. They finally do get Yum Yum, but that seems to be it as they basically cycle Ubers, but Freya does have a 30% add, pretty sizable to work with here as a... Uh, yeah, gonna set, they're going to settle in the last. You know, they've put up, put up pretty much half the time on the board is gone now, so we'll have to see how that goes, but 30% Uber add for Freya as they kind of cycle Ubers, but in Freya's favor. Yeah, 50... Or not 30, it's more 30 than 50, my bad, but yeah, this is pretty respectable, able to use it, and the gun is getting built up by Shamu, finally reaching level 2, so they're going to have that in their disposal, and it looks like they're going to go straight into it on the right-hand side from the attacker's perspective, immediately going in with Pyro on the gun, try to make sure that the gun is able to live a little bit longer, but is unable to keep it alive. Banny actually really deep getting popped <laughs> up and will get cleaned up by Scratch, but it does not matter. Getting on top of the cap, Freyotech to make sure the stickies are cleared off, getting that cap time in the first round, going in Freyotech's favor. I feel like Mal didn't build that Uber super well. I feel like they, not that it really mattered, I don't think I would have gotten that Uber anyway, but I, I feel like that 30% kind of got larger the 40-50% when it didn't need to. Like, a small, de small detail, but it didn't matter, but... The bigger matter problem the is they, they got capped while all of them were still alive. That too, yeah, it I mean, they got, they got bandied, they got their man, I guess. Yeah, I mean, consolation prize, but it's not going to do too much on the scoreboard. Immediate fast bomb from the side of Freytech, but it's going to be Trip that is the first of casualty in the training Donovan's of getting chased here. Down. Yeah, they're finally able to kill Donovan, but it's taken a bit. It's actually Dank giving be room a for Sin to go in. So, uh, Sin, uh, Sai and Dank are actually cut off from each other, and Dank is actually nowhere near the fight at all. They've caught Hubba in the corner, Sin. Tad, but yeah, he, he's able to get one. That's something, and now it, the shoe's on the other foot. It was looking like the side of Mal was going to be caught on the opposing team's side, but now they're able to lock down their own cafe to prevent Freytech from leaving. Building their Uber, making sure it's just a moment before they get it, and trying to bust through. Here's Ever bombing in, trying to go straight on to Dank to see if he can get this force, and he did not have yet? Question mark? Yeah, Dank was alone in joke for a bit, and Freyo oh, saw that. Oh, that's right. He was at 90 because he got separated and had to loop all the way around, so they actually technically had to add. I yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, they saw it. That. They knew it. That was tactical. Yeah. They, they knew that. So heads up play from Freytech. They're going to see that. They may even try to refight here as Mal is going to try to get this point. I gotta say, Mal's mids are kind of unusual that they always just basically run to the enemy team's cafe, but Mal is gonna get the midpoint for a type of 30% and gonna try to push in here as, uh, you know, Dankers are having heals, but two oh, kills immediately for them. All the- they're Three, Freya's getting nuked! Four, oh my five. god! Everyone except Ever, who's not even in the fight, immediately just explodes. Both soldiers unable to land where they want you to make sure they live, and both scouts caught out right off the bat. How about no scout speed to retreat, and that is, uh, Ooh, quite- It's quite the turnover. Like, th did they just die? I saw they were, like, kind of in. I guess the- was it just a snowball of the soldiers dying? I mean, the soldiers tried to make space, but they weren't able to land anywhere that was safe. They just got uh, killed. And but... speaking of soldiers just dying and getting killed, they were un- Once again, they weren't even trying to go in, trying to hold their own last, and they get landed on. Scratch is just edging the point. Because there's no one to block it the at collapse. all. That's going to be a mal round, so that... one to one going here. Two, two fights in a row where the Freyotech soldiers just unable to find a spot where they don't just explode, and you know, that's a very quick round for the side of Mal. Yeah, it feels like the Freyotech soldiers that second time were just trying to like leave the spawn door, and they left the right. spawn door into the enemy team, and there was no one to help them because the rest of the team was you know hiding on the other side because they, they were worried about it. But onto a new mid. 
both demos going to go valley. Uh, so we do see a bit of a fastball from Drip. Just going to arrive and start try, try to get some spam off. Not too much going to happen. As he's actually a lot of players fighting Trip, and he's going to fall for a beat. Oh, no. Oh, my God. He almost did. Yeah, he pretty much got destroyed right off the bat. And Dang is actually going to fall to Stickies from Ether. Once again, they went this far left side and weren't able to, un like, completely unable to deal with Cafe. Uh, this is definitely being the, the big thing for the side of Freyotech that's helping them, uh, you know, I mean, they didn't win the second mid, but at least, you know, have some sort of traction in all the mids in general. As a solo player in Cafe, that is, uh, being a thorn in Mal's yeah, side, and that's in the, the mid win this time. Yeah, that, the Cafe player for Froyo is definitely a problem player for Mal. They're having a, you know, their strategy involves going to the enemy team's Cafe, and for somebody in that, you know, really tiny part of the map waiting for them, the Soldier bus can do so much damage and just, you know, prevent the enemy team from playing the game, so... Definitely a problem for Mal to work out, as we do have a Pyro and a Pyro blocking the sentry, so we got some good Highlander gameplay coming out here, trying to defend last with pretty big Uber to set, as they're gonna pop in through the left side here, but the other team's on the entire and others ever. Yeah, Uber's gonna fade, they've brought Psy into a corner, so there's not gonna be any stickies on the point for much longer, it does fall. Donovan trying to make some space for the rest of his team to be able to get in. 2v1 in terms of death as Sin tries to initiate for his team to be able to get aim and Bandy's collecting a couple as well and that's going to be a round for the side of Freya Tech. They lost Ether in that but you know he did his job. He got the gun. He locked down spawns but put out some damage and Freya Tech able to collapse and clean up before uh, side of Mal is able to you know recover from their losses. It looked okay at first for Mal but I feel I it was like a 4v5 which is winnable but then I, I think the DM fight just happened to go Freya's way. I saw I think Sin had a very nice bomb into the combo that kind of Seal the deal. As we're driving a second mid, and Sai actually went choke this time. And is quite hurt, so Sai's basically not even in mid yet. Donovan in Envy Team's Cafe, they're in the field, but it looks like a there's gonna be immediate oh, fastball from Sin onto Dank, and Dank just gets immediately here. Donovan went into the opposing team's cafe, they looked at him and decided to not deal with him, but then didn't immediately W. So he just jumped right back out and helped explode Dank right off the bat, and that ends the mid for the most part. It's scrappy though. <laughs> Freyotech is able to you know, get some consolation prizes as a 2v1 Shamu here. It should, and he will fall. So they kind of salvaged a tad, even though Dank exploded right off the bat. They took down Habita, which, I mean, at, th at that point, that's exactly what you want and are trying to go for to make sure the medics are really even. But they might so mid far, these, uh, these mids are really going back and forth. And yeah, the, well, no, they had two late deaths and they're not going to be did. able to have forwards. So they're just going to chill on two. So I think I, if they really wanted to, they could have because they had heals. But I, I also understand it not going for that because they do have to add. Might as yes. well not lose that. Yeah, Sunshine mid is way too big and the cap would take too, too long. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to lock down the doorways properly because they'd have two rolling out the entire time, so they would just lose ground and eventually lose, so might as well just chill. Just play off the one advantage you for sure have, which is uh, your add from Dank dying much earlier. Although it's only 30%, we, I just said Sunshine's pretty big and it's looking like that they... Uh, Actually, doesn't look like they're go going. I mean, realistically, when it comes to mid fights, it can be hard or the normal to yeah, there's a lot track of ground. the Uber. Yeah, and, and Fro can see it. where you're coming because it's, mm -hmm. it's Sunshine, so it's really hard to get a surprise push, push off on Sunshine because you can pretty much see the other team from like way back in basically your own joke. So they're just they're just playing safe. They're not wanting to play yeah. risky. Yeah, I mean, and it, it, it this makes could sense. even be their strength. I mean, because we haven't really seen either of these teams too much. These guys have had like a relative like okay amount of experience playing versus each other could also be that they trust their defense more than Froyotech's offense and trying to break stalemates like these. Yeah, I, it's not a Kev team, but uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of the Kev teams in the bunk as We do see a pause? This is indeed a die? pause. Ooh, okay, I see a lot of rockets being fired. 1v1 with uh, Shamu versus Yum Yum in Valley, but it's just one of those derpy scout thing 1v1s that doesn't result in anything. Oh, yeah, just trying to draw eyes so it's harder Good. to Look at that spam from Sin, though. That, that's, some, that's some wild spam. <laughs> But it's like through the window. Yeah, he has two rockets through the window at as at, at, at Chimu as uh, Yum Yum takes the fight with him. That, that's oh, yeah, he's just trying to jump. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a bait, but I'm not really sure who's gonna. I guess uh, Donovan's gonna be the bomb here. He's the one yeah, who's he, actually yeah, he's buffed against the wall. But there's he, he's gonna double jump here. We'll see what he does. But uh... I don't yeah, know. I'm... I feel like the tar target might be Shamu. Like the plan is. Sin. Yeah, I think that too. Sin jumps through the window, tries to weaken Shamu as Yum Yum is baiting him. And then uh, Donovan bombs in as Yum Yum walks forward, and they try to like get kills. And then whoever survives can go behind and. Steal I was gonna the pack. say Yum Yum runs behind. Uh, Donovan gets like a distraction play. If Donovan gets, if like, because if Dank has to surf into Yum Yum, that'd be huge. Yeah. Although I feel like I feel like this isn't gonna be towards Dank right off the bat. 
Yeah, we'll see. I, I do like Trip just like in No Man's Land behind his entire team. <laughs> just like you see where Trip is, it's kind of it, it just seems like a funny spot to me. You know, he's like kind of by the flank, but not really. Yeah. He's uh, doing a good job shooting that wall there. I mean, they're kind of near Chother. It's not that deep. Yeah. Look at the low that's. I, I uh, I'm I, I don't I see some coordination out of Freo. I think. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if we're, it's week one. I'd be surprised if we see. Oh yeah, there's, there's like no matching. Yeah. yeah, no one's at that point yet. Yeah, Hubba does have the Chad no items medic though. Love to see it. Yeah, absolutely no coordination anywhere from a uh, from either of these teams. Oh, he does have the backpack. True. Just the single, the single item. That's a scary backpack. Oh, there oh, we go. We're on pause. Let's see who the bomb target is. Oh, Donovan's going in. Oh, well, he does actually try to go for the medic, but it doesn't even barely reach him. It actually lands on about. top of Trip. They give some space, but Freya is actually not crazy Trip healthy, so they're not going to go anywhere else. And oh, Trip tried to bomb in. He's, he's still he putting did. the pressure on. He's like in Valley, but yeah, he's getting really weak. No one else is able to really go. Aim was in Cafe trying to make space. But yeah, I think it was Trip or nothing, and because he got somewhat denied and wasn't able to get his bomb off. They're just going to cut their losses and not try to force something. If he's just tried to sack it for nothing, it might have open up like valley while he's rolling out and yeah. uh could be a yeah, getting their side. in valley again so probably gonna be another sack at least oh there it's, i told you there he is there it is he's donovan disguised as a friendly sniper as the spy class what did i say i'm simply nostradamus he, he disguised as a friendly sniper too i don't know if they bought it but they did see you know a, a sniper for the other team oh, oh they oh. got immediately rocket jumped off and True. Don't i don't know. think i don't think anyone saw it though yeah, I, it doesn't look like they know. They don't really look like super spy aware right now. Donovan is crab walking. Like, oh, oh, he got bumped into trip found him. Yeah. It's rough because you want the cloak, so you make yeah, sure you like, behind them. And stuff. But, oh, bomb coming in. We're actually going on to Aim, who's in cafe trying to find him. And, oh, Aim just turns around and is able to kill Sin. Yeah, actually, and you have no still soldiers. behind oh, them. Oh, Banny air shot by Sai. He got Wait. caught out, popped up into the air and choked. Uh -huh. And now. Aim on the chase, pops held it up in the air, you second rocket chase after him, gets that force, and that's where the pause happened as soon as they landed. I'm not sure who it was for, though. Yeah, we can go for this back cap, though. He has been behind this whole time, and this could be a problem if they don't send him back to stop. It looks like Trip, he's just kind of just spamming, but he has to, have to jump this point at some point. As they do manage to block it, and they get Yum Yum, so that's huge. And for attack, not really in a position to make any plays off of that, so a noble attempt by Yum Yum it almost worked, but in the end, uh, it is going to be a pretty decent... Uh, Okay, Hubbard still Should does have a Zuber. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, the pause was a uh, Fanny retried the server, lagged out or something while he was dead. So and yeah. it's all fun, didn't affect the game. But Donovan and Sin, maybe? Sin might die to Sam Rockets? No, he's able to get inside in time. So Donovan not oh. actually here for this last one. They're just in. They're so deep. Actually, getting on the engineer, the gun will die, and they finally pop, but they're at the other team's spawn. They're trying to lay a ring around the Rosie and make sure they can get really any kill they can, or at least cap time. Sin getting really weak, the same with Trips, and will actually fall, and Trip will live to fight another day. Scratch is going to fall, but this Uber comes out from the side of Hova to make sure he can save his teammates. Chasing down Shamu over on this right hand side, maybe even aim going in lower. Three men trying to chase him now, able to pistol down that soldier inside. Jumping away, barely able to escape. Same with the rest of the projectiles of Trip and Dank walking away, and Cryotech getting their Uber just in time to save what probably could have been a pretty easy last hold for last push for, for Mal otherwise. Yeah, they uh, I, I thought. It looked like a very good mal thing, but they didn't get any kills, so Freya Tech had a huge refight there and was able able to just, you know, get all the kills they needed. It wasn't a total disaster for Mal, you know, but they're kind of back on the drawing board here on mid. But they uh, have decided to drop a Shibu Sniper, where Shibu I feel like did pretty good experience with a sniper. Definitely a, one of the higher echelon ones, I'd say. A lot of experience on the class. Pretty terrifying. Yeah, try to make some space for him. You gotta have to be careful though, because soldiers bombing. might actually commit at a certain point and uh, collapse can, onto you if you're not too careful. Yeah, Sunshine can be deceptively hard to snipe into because you can you kind of automatically know where he is. So it's like, unless he like in Chad Peaks Cafe, it's I think it's personally at least uh, speaking as a stupid sniper man, it can be challenging just because they know where you're coming from. So there's gonna be spam. It's just you know like. When when snipers are like, all right, screw it. I'm just going to walk in and see if I can quick scope them because I want to get off it, this class. It, is kind of it feels like that almost from the start, or at least the yes. amount of time that you That's have patience. That's how much patience. Is, yeah. yeah, the amount of time that you have patience for until it gets to that point is much lower. But Cafe, Aim has found himself low and gets 2v1, and it seems like the setup for the side of Mal is oh, not going to be able to save him. Almost got him. 
almost got sin on his way out to make it a trade, but just barely escaping to get the pack and an arrow. So they're on the move now. Donovan actually just totally denied in the side of Valley, and they're not able to get through Cafe either. So overall, just a one for one trade, and Donovan's oh, dead for a bit. Very oh, good he's trick actually chased down and got sin. And Youngum, oh, he's actually baited. He's getting baited. It's just baited, and oh, Trip barely lived and able to fight another day. So three dead. And they're just getting walked in. Oh my god! It. He just walks in Scratch to straight through the sticky traps. They had Uber and Denk hasn't even used yet. They're trying to get some damage. They're trying to chase him down, but Banny is able to get the meat shot out, but will have to be the martyr for his team and probably will die chased down a bit. He He's actually buying some damage. time okay, and Hubbada will get chased down by aim though. They have way too many resources at their disposal to make sure that Hubbada can still die without the scout speed. So this is a pretty good spot for the side of Mal. It's going to be a bit before they go ahead and start the push because they got to get two capped up. They have a sniper and they have a trip who's not ready to enter the doors yet, but they're poking around. Aim's actually able to get Sin really early and the chase is on. On to Young M. Drop really low. Aim's going to give his life, but Sin, uh, Sin and Scratch are able to collect those Should two frags. sniper. Trying to get some cap time. Ether's able to kill Scratch and now the respawns from Freytech are salvaging just a tad. Shamu's got to really have to pop off or, oh, this is going to be bad for them if they're it's not too 50. careful. Banny's Ban on, Ban on the chase. He got to make sure he doesn't get owned here. Shibu is on the SMG. He does hit the, he hits a bunch of 50s, but in the end, not going to matter as Bank is going to be able to live here, but he needs someone to heal. All right, Ubers are dead even. I don't know if Freytech knows this. They might think they have small ad here, but yeah. Shibu sniper worked out pretty well up until I had to push last there and then just, you know, once that one scout died, it was just kind of over. But, you know, hard to cap with just this, just one scout. Yeah, they're trying to dry push off of a singular scout pick. They're able to get through and get tripped, but Yum Yum will give us his life for it. But that's about all they can really get for now. Pause? Another pause. I'm poking around, Choke. Yeah, I, both the. Uh, I'm kind of scared for Fro here because I feel like they're pushing. They might. I feel like they might think they have that, or at least think it's like. Don't, they don't think it's like this close, but we'll see as it is a short pause, probably someone just reconnecting. Aim is gonna fall here and Banny is gonna live. The Uber exchange is happening in Choke and Frantex getting a lot of space at this actually. Yeah, Although they're, they're, they're doing players. pretty well for the thin margin that they're pushing by. This is not a huge they advantage behind. to want to push off of, but they're not only they're they're chasing down Shamu, but he's so actually salvaging his team. He's, <laughs> he's chasing, he is chasing last with heels. heels. <laughs> That's actually huge because there's no heals here. Oh dank though. He's very oh Donovan almost gets him. That was actually going to be huge. He's still chasing. One final rocket, maybe. Oh, oh that's enough to do it. Wow. I mean, I guess that is kind of the play. If the way you think about it, I guess if Hubbard is chasing with Banny, it's not like he can die at mid compared yeah. to Dank, I suppose. I guess there's a silver lining, but that's actually huge. He salvages. Yeah, that is crazy. You have aim hiding in a corner. Love to see it. Oh, he's actually jumping around the corner. Both soldiers bombing, so they're trying to do a coordination play. Do a lot of damage, but the end. Not gonna matter that much as it, it is just that damage and there's a medic to heal them but maybe they bought a little time getting in that might have been the goal there as yeah for us taking their time you know very justifiably so taking their sweet time getting into second even though they have like their ads so big they can get away with it they had to make sure they're not gonna die anything and now they're gonna go low yeah, probably gonna pop straight through right off the bat unless they try to change doors, but nope. Here comes Ether trying to bomb in straight towards the gun, blast back just a tad, trying to get this gun down and will eventually fall. Aim stuck into a corner, head hit in the ceiling, is unable to escape, and so many of them drop like flies. Who is? Scratch actually had to rejoin the team. I think that's where the pause was. Scratch had to. Oh, yeah, this is where the pause was. Scratch like lagged out and uh, rejoined the wrong team, so that is uh, definitely salt in the wounds there, unfortunately. <laughs> un unable to have a full lineup for the last hold, but at the end of the day, it's a round for the side of Froyotex. We go into another mid. I'm kind of curious. We've seen, like, trading sides every single mid so far, so yeah. I'm kind of curious if we're going to see the same thing. It doesn't or... have time at three. Am I... Am I... No, it's a different config. Oh, it's just, there's no okay. more halftime. Oh! I, uh... I, I'm learning new things every day. All right. Well, and it, it does appear that... Okay, Yum Yum is super hurting. He's gonna harvest immediately. Both both teams have lost two players, but Shimu gonna be the third death here means that Fur is gonna have a numbers hat to work with, although they have a lot of hurt players. Donovan going in, huge plays on the scratch. It just saw he does hit one pipe onto Banny, but we'll see if he can protect the medic against Donovan. Um is gonna be able to is he gonna be able to kill Tank? Tank is so hurt. And he gets the oh Tank is still alive, there's no way. Is he gonna get out through lower? I mean Donovan. Yeah, Donovan's has to flanking him. though. This is such a weird scenario. Oh, Donovan this is sees him. High risk, high reward. Because Tank is dead. V Oh, okay, yeah, that kind of delayed his death by uh, more than it was necessary. Hey, he went for it, though. Imagine yeah. if he actually lived through that, but I, there's too many resources up to, like, find him properly. Yeah. I think maybe if it was just Donovan, you could go for something like that, but there was literally three other, two or three other people that were that were coming, which is why he felt like he couldn't, like, actually walk through a dungeon. He had to kill Donovan to immediately. Two. Yeah, pretty much. But it's actually really impressive for the side of Froyo. Sin pretty much didn't have a mid. He exploded right off the bat. 
and it started to look really poor for them, and they still salvaged it, and it turned things around, and uh, are now on mouse second, so they're definitely in the driver's seat here. Giant ad, got plenty of time, all the time in the world is, uh, the defense is starting to get it set up by the side of Mount Gun in the normal spot. Pyro on the top of the barrels to really try to lock things down. Has been spotted, Pyro, so they'll have pog. to get through him. Yeah, and stop waiting for a to see it. Yeah, here it comes. They are Ubering. They saw the Pyro too, so if Holy they get stuffed pyro. by the Pyro, this is their own fault. This is entirely oh their own fault. They saw the Pyro and pushed anyway, and yeah, it, it, it do be like that. Yeah, size are Donovan on oh, last. Donovan last. There's, There's a lot of players on though. last, though, yeah. Yeah, unfortunate timing there, but we're going to lose three. Dan can have a huge Uber hitter push out last. Yum Yum's in the corner, and okay, someone saw him. I was going to say, that corner, Two it, it works way better than expected, that corner, but yeah. Danny, <laughs> Danny in for a sad time. Freyatek going for some desperation plays. None of them worked, so uh, all they did is buy a little time for Hubbardo to get his Uber, and all of it's on fly, so more desperation plays. Yeah, I think uh, I think they didn't realize the pyre was close, so it kind of screwed him over. But you know, Donovan Spy could be using the salvages, but Ether is actually just stuffed in way too far forward. I don't think he realized his team had left with Donovan trying to go for the pistols, and he hits three of them. It would have killed Dank. Dank was delayed so hard. I think he was afraid of like a sniper or a hiding soldier or something. But they weren't able to be ready for the the Spitty Cloak. weren't expecting it. Yeah, James That's Bond Double Seven coming in huge there, getting look at yep. look at Trip. Trip is. He was hiding in the corner by their forwards, expecting them to immediately push just at 1 HP, but uh, <laughs> at least no, you, have, you have time to, to get out and get some help. Yep, Freyatek going to be pushing in here with full Uber. I'd love to see where size Stakies are. If they're going to go Valley, I feel like it's hard to Stakie off. Like, I, can you even Stakie trap off Valley? I see size like the funny Stakies there. Like, you can on either there. side, but oh, Trip body blocks Ether as he tries to bomb in behind. Is going to clean up. Shamu behind as well. They tried to do two men for oh. back half, and they got both of them as they went back. So that's going to be huge for the side of Freyatek. Kind of... They're going to get aggro off of them. They're just leaving one to cap here because they know there's no one to really block a mid fight here. Now, Dank only at 56% means that they might have to bat. Yeah, it looks like they're going to give up second here just because they know they don't have the resources to fight it. So, going to give up second here, but have Uber to push out a last. And uh, pushing in a sunshine last can get kind of stressful. I feel like there's a lot of you know, Although, they did do a very good job of clearing all the funny back caps last time. So, maybe they're very good at that. I think this is going to be the first time we've seen this map uh, where you're pushing out of last, but the only advantage you have is just pure Uber. Every yeah. time it's been like a couple players dead. Uber, so comes. Uber comes out. The rest of the team is pretty much out through Valley. They're trying to chase down into choke onto Ether, but are able to find goals. that kill. And yeah, I don't think they. Uh, I don't think they. going to immediately refight this. Tree. Yeah, trip bombing. He's on the fence here, so he has good play. A good positioning, at least for the time being. So like, we've gone into a leapfrog scenario on the second. This, if you're in the leapfrog scenario and you're pushing at a last constantly, that is so stressful. So if I'm on Mal, I want to get out of this situation if possible. Oh, Trip, trip said uh, the is he gonna get too. He just has to oh, go for the bomb. Oh, he actually That was the best thing he could have done probably in his unfortunate situation. But right taking a full Uber into second, and they're probably not gonna have to pop. Both soldiers dead means it's just on side or get make something happen here. And doesn't look like that's happening. So Freytek gonna be immediately Ubering into last. Yeah, they're just walking straight through. They finally use that the other team spawned inside. Getting uh, unable to get through the doors. They're just getting on top of the cap because there's no stickies and they only have three people alive to get on the cap. Shamu, there to block it. Will die, same with Scratch, and it's a 4-1 for Freyo. They're getting closer and closer to clinching this game in a 5-1 win if they can close it out. But now they still have some fight in them. They can turn things around. Got to get the mid fights going their way. So we'll see what happens as we go into the next one. Yeah, Freyo knew, I, I knew it was over when Freyo Ubered at the enemy team spawn, and that last, mm -hmm. they got so deep because there just wasn't enough players to watch all the doors that it was just kind of, that was just over just from where they held off the right click key. But, on that note, we're going to settle into potentially our last mid of this match if uh, Freyotic is able to come out on top. We're going to see a pretty much immediate fast bomb here from Sin going to the enemy team cafe. Going to be hunted down by a scout, but gets the pack and have to back up. His, there's a lot of high ground happening. Sin doing a big bomb. If he does manage to get air shot, as Freyotic is just vaporized. Yeah, they're just kind of stuck in no man's land. I mean, there's a lot of them, though. They're on the wrong side of the map. They're going to lose aim, but at least they have all the players in the world to, to try to deal with their remaining. And they're unable to get, they're unable to get Yum Yum, but will collect other. So no demo to, you know, Sticky Trap 2 on his X or anything like that. So pretty much free second mid win for the side of Mal and a chance to turn things around. So far, as of recent, their last pushes have been left with, a, you know, Something to be desired and unable to convert, like at least a couple for now, but got another chance to go ahead and put another round on the board for them as they work their way in a lower lobby and they climb top right, go straight lower. Let's see what, what, what they go ahead and choose. Look, it's looking like top right. They're kind of spotting just a tad. And he has like the secret sentry. Like, the, like Mal's gonna push in and just find the sentry halfway through their push. 
Oh, yeah, Trip spotted actually. <laughs> Trip, Trip, Trip sees all, and he's able to spot it and spam it out. So, and he tried to pull a fast one on them, and Trip said no to that. But they are all pushing into the door that the demo man's spamming. I don't know if they're gonna get this last, but I, I think Sai just doubled his DPM to shooting that doorway. So, a failed last push. Uh, that's a. I think that's what the third failed last push. There's been a. The, the Mel, I feel like they've had a lot of opportunities to get in the lead in this match, and it just has not happened. Yeah, I think it's a couple different issues every I mean, that time was kind of, they got on the cap way too late. Like, if you bring, you either want cap time or kills, right? And they got cap time, but it took a long while to actually reach that decision that that was the play to make. It was too late. We got out of the doors and were able to block and work their way out onto two, and now they have Ad trying to work their way through Cafe. It's not huge, though. They'll get debt on, but beat Ubered, so no damage. Oh, oh no, they do kill Trip. Trip, Trip, Trip gets other. super air sticky, yeah. yeah. The, the sink air sticky, which was the only consolation prize there, but Trip does have a giga long spawn, so I'll have to see how that happens. A, a brief pause? Who knows, but regardless, uh, full red for Mal pushing into here, and pretty sizable at that. They're going to use Pritch immediately before no I think it's so Blank far fight. out. They're trying to reinforce the flank with the fact that Trip is dead, leaving Aim over there, but they're going to lose Shamu right to the bat, and Aim's already half HP, so they've definitely mismanaged this entirely. Gonna have Look how deep Freya is. Low. Freya, Freyotech's trying to move off the distraction as the rest of the team backs up and tries to live, but I don't know if they're going to be so lucky at that. Side's trying to escape away. Dank already pretty much out. Aim trying to salvage. It's a nice shot on Banny, but Trip is going to fall over to the side of Yum Yum as well. Aim trying to work his way into the shutter. Barely. Oh, Side's able to make sure he's uh, going to live and not get blown out by Donovan rushing through the shutter. Aim I'm actually trying, trying to, to make fight space this. I respect this. The chat, but melting out, running through. They're trying to salvage this hard, but it is not working. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're gonna lose three, including Sai, who's oh, gonna be a <laughs> super late death. He's not even dying, they're leaving him as a pet almost. Just say, hey, he'll be useless. Just go to last. Oh, what is Sai? Oh, Sai is trying to fight Donovan. Can he? Can he? Oh, just misses his pipe. So, Sai is gonna be a late death there. This is looking really disastrous for uh, Mal here, as they don't have a demo for last. They're getting some kills, but. Let's see if Aim can live here. It doesn't look like it's the case. They're three down. It's a 3v3 fight. It's just the medic on last with Shamu. Looking, oh, a nice air shot there. Looks like it could be a royal round as Freya puts up 5 1 in their inaugural Aston match this season. Yep, pretty definitively. I think it was a bit of a close start between both these teams, a little back and forth. But Freya Tech, they definitely showed that they could adapt over time with the mid fights and trying to make sure that the last holds went their way and things of that nature. So. Props them able to take this match, and we'll see what the future has in store throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I think the the game was closer than the rounds appear. Because if you see a five one, you think, all right, you know, probably not sure if it's a roll, but you know, probably not looking super hot. But I, I think the fact that it it's a five one with a bunch of failed last pushes from Mal to me, I, it was closer than you think. But if Mal can clean up their last pushes, that's a much different game. True. I think if you, if you said that. Getting Uberad into last equals a round. This game would have been maybe like a 5-4. Five, 5-3, five, three. Five, three, five, four. Because they failed like three times. So yeah. it just, at the end of the day, it just goes a show. Sometimes it's just that one thing that kind of screws you over. You know, it, you like don't have your mids down. And you're on the wrong side of the map every single round. Uh, or just like the last pushes, you get the opportunity but can't convert. It's the little things, you know. And it really yeah. makes a difference in Freytech coming out strong this time. We can take a little peek at the log to, to see what's up. With all the pauses, I mean, the pauses weren't that long, but it kind of makes it so no one can really enter, like a 300 DPM club. There were some stalemates, but you can definitely see that uh, there are some scouts top of the charts for the, the kills, which I think it's customary for Sunshine, at least. Yeah, I, I would consider it a pretty, you know, a pretty good scout map, as we do see Mr. Banny on top, perhaps expected. You know, Shibu may have gotten more kills, but Banny did get a lot of damage there, uh, it appears. So I'm looking... Okay, yeah, he's still to be on the act on the stream logs as well. I'm kind of surprised that uh the Ether's DPM is the lowest in the server. Must have he was been... the tank. Yeah, it was just the person getting shot. Must have been some of the stalemates weren't able to do a whole lot of spam back to them or something. Kept traps instead of like sticky spamming or things like that. And he stole but all of his damage. At at the end of the day, you know, the stats don't matter too much if you're able to collect the win, and Freyotech does just that, you know. But otherwise, I think. I think a lot of the comparisons aren't too dissimilar. I think the yeah. big thing is there's like the the minor like one of the scouts KD is much better, you know, a couple more medic deaths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but yeah, overall it's cl it's it's you know relatively close considering it's a five one. Yeah, a lot of the times you see five one and it's just a complete roll. Uh, or in someone's terms of the, the logs. Yeah, for sure.
it seems uh pretty normal. I think that just goes to show what we were saying before that it there were a lot of pretty even moments. Um, and yeah. I I think that just goes to show what we were saying in the very beginning, where because of the potential for these two teams to play versus each other and have really entertaining and, and good matches, that I think it means that even though this is a five one, I think a lot of people are still going to be really really anticipating uh like the second time these teams play like in a month. Yeah. Yeah, again, depending on, especially map dependent too, it could be a, I, I don't know if Mal considers them a sunshine team, but if Mal doesn't think they're a super strong sunshine team, then, you know, depending on the map, we also could see a very different match, even still, you know, teams can also get worse as these can go on, it does happen. Yeah. I think we do have some people uh, filing in for the interviews. Yeah, we do have we'll a, Mr. a Mr. Banny, un- Donovan, other stuff. Hello guys, congratulations on your victory. Let's get Heather unmuted. Got it. Thank you. Hey, thanks. All right, so early on in the season, I mean, this is a a, a classic question, but you don't really have like a repertoire of, of maps that like, oh, we've played this tons of times, we're good at this, because it's a new team early on in the season. What led you guys to being comfortable with Sunshine in particular? Um. Well, to be honest, we kind of tried every map a little bit, and just seemed like sunshine was kind of our strongest right off the bat so we've been leaning into that a bit but um that's yeah i mean that's pretty much it i think any map we we have the potential to be good on it's just this is the map that we decided was like the one we really wanted to prepare for week one and so we went for sunshine and uh hopefully we can get to that level on every map you know in due time so i think um Correct me if I'm wrong, I think in the off season, it's not like you guys have never played a version of Mal that you played in the match. You know, you have an idea of what they're about and, and how you guys stack up, at least in the scrims. So uh, do you think your expectations of what was going to happen at the end of the day was met with this match result? Or did you think it was going to be a bit more even or the other way around? Or what were your thoughts pre versus post match? I'll let you answer if anyone wants to speak up. I think I thought it was going to be very close. I thought it was going to be like a tooth and nail kind of match, considering our scrims were pretty even the last couple of days. But um, yeah, the match wasn't. But yeah, I. What can you do? You know. Yeah, our scrims have been very close with them. Um, I would say more or less. Uh, they they prepared us quite well. I'd say the only thing that they did that we were not prepared for was the pyro hold they had on last, which completely ruined one of our uh, pushes. <laughs> I said you oh, got, on the barrel. Oh, that was rough. Yeah, that one uh, caught us a bit off guard, I suppose. Um, but besides that, I mean, I think they're a good team. I actually think, like, playstyle-wise, they mesh with each other quite well. But um, maybe they're going through a similar thing that we went through yesterday, where it's like, now they need to kind of learn how to play a match so they can replicate the way that they play in their scrims in a match. Cause I felt like, um, we went into that match very like intense and focused and, uh, it seemed like they were maybe a little bit more uh, in disarray, I suppose. Yeah. I felt like they're, uh, the match, like, like it was a five to one, but I feel like they had a lot of failed Uber at last pushes, you know, that, that to be really stuck out as that, uh, you guys had a very good last defense or they had a very, or last pushing, or perhaps a combination of both. For you guys, just held last for so long, and they could not break in for multiple Uber Ed pushes. So I think that was definitely a big deciding factor, and why it didn't feel as close as it could have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been we've been trying to refine the last pushes, the last holds, especially because that has been a weakness, uh, you know, at times, and nothing more crucial than a last fight. So definitely important to put some thought into those. One thing that's really interesting that I wanted to ask you guys is, uh, you, you know, you can see the classic, like, you're feeling the team out, things are a little bit even at the beginning, and then prior seasons, you'd have a half time to really talk things out, fix your mix, fix your pushes, figure out the play style differences and how you beat them in a rock, paper, scissors on paper, and things like that. Um, but with that not being there, how does that adjustment kind of work out in terms of recognizing issues and trying to fix them in the heat of the moment? Is it that much more difficult? or? Uh, did you feel like you actually had that in this match at all, or was it just a breeze, or how did that kind of transpire throughout the match with no halftime? 
Anyone else want to answer? Or should I? Think, I? <laughs> I think it kept like our flow going. They paused after a certain, after a round, but I think that's something like teams will have to adapt to compared to like getting the guaranteed like pause time between the halves. Yeah, I think we're gonna see an increase in pack pauses. Yeah, tack pauses are pretty much gonna have to be the replacement for the uh, for the halftime. So you know, teams are just gonna have to get in the habit of that and be on top of it. I think that. Uh, we didn't think that we needed to take one um, because we were, you know, doing well. We had momentum um, and any mistakes that we made, we more or less knew what to expect or what to change. I think it's very important that like um, we uh, would focus on the mids and stuff like that. There definitely wasn't a lot of time to sit around discussing stuff. Um, if we needed to do something like that, we probably would have been wise to take a tack pause. But we just made sure to stay in the moment, focus on the next mid, focus on the next fight. And if there was something that we needed to change, we tried to just identify it ASAP and succinctly and then move on. So one thing that I think that's kind of uh, fun with new teams is, you know, a lot of the time you go into it and it's like, all right, we got to, you know, try to fix all our issues and make sure we got everything under wraps. And it probably makes things a bit easier since I know there's some, like, teammate synergy from, from like, last season within this team now. but. Are there anything uh, in particular that you guys kind of expected that you're go were going to have to work on as you guys started to play together and make this team that you found out was like, oh, actually, we have this down from the get-go. We don't, don't really need to work on this that much at all. We can look elsewhere. Or did anything work seamlessly from the get-go? I think most of our like success has been because of what we've done like in the time that we've had, like all of the grinding we've done. I don't think like anything was just like there from the get-go i mean i think me and yum yum have good synergy and we played together a couple seasons back but that that's about all we have going you know hub and sin played together sin was on a different class but me and uh, me yum yum and Ather played together but it was long ago you know but i think most of the things we got like success wise was because of what we put in yeah just to add on to that i think for basically all of us like we're just trying to get used to how bandy wants to play the game and that's definitely been like a lot of work to get used to, but definitely a lot of success that we've gotten just from us working to try to get used to that playstyle. Now that you guys yeah. are actually talking about that playstyle and figuring out how you want to mold your team, is or you think your that expectation is being reached in terms of uh for for each of you guys that are trying to make sure that you're you're all playing the way that you know he's trying to lead the team in that way? Is there anything that uh, was like, oh, okay, I didn't have to actually change that much to get things going? Or was it a grind, like Donovan said, for all of you? Like, oh, we had to individually, like, all change things to make sure you're a well-oiled machine. I think everyone has had some things to change. But there was a natural chemistry. And um, when we were, you know, scouting players and recruiting, um, there was a lot of thought that went into kind of people's existing like skill set and play styles so i think that we recruited players that um we felt would already be kind of in the the general sort of style that we were looking for you know um whether it be the right like amount of aggression or the the mechies or you know just things like that because building a team it's it's something that requires some thoughts and uh having it be balanced and well-rounded is very important um, so that's kind of what I was aiming for with making this team. You know, obviously everyone here um, has skill and has a willingness to practice and improve. So I really appreciate that about this team. It's very uh, refreshing for sure. Um, I know that a lot of people, when they get to the top, um, they, they get complacent, let's say. And for whatever reason, I don't feel that way. I feel more inspired than ever to keep practicing and improving and all that kind of stuff um so it's it's been a nice um experience so far playing with everyone and um you know bringing this team together i'm excited to see what we we do next i think we'll it's uh it's only up from here really i mean even though we won this match i feel like there's still so much we could improve so i'm excited for that how about a, how is your invite debut so far i think you're the the, the newer person on the team in terms of the the level of play has it been a easier harder than you expected has everything worked um, out yeah so it's definitely a big change from what i'm used to it's a big change in pace 
I wouldn't say it's harder than I expected because I definitely did expect it to be hard. So I'm, it's definitely met that expectation, but it's just a huge change in, in pace and uh, kind of responsibilities. All right, well, we'll see how everything transpires. I think we're casting you guys next week as well. I think you guys have a 20ZC match. That one should be pretty hype. I'm sure that uh, them as well as some other teams are going to be matches that you guys are uh, going to be looking forward to, to to try to clinch out the win in the first half of the season. But uh, Space, you got any more questions before you go ahead and move over to the shout-out phase and end the stream? I'm good. Okay, go ahead and uh, go to the shout-outs. Any last words before you close things out, top to bottom, starting with Banny? Um, GG's to Mal, GG's to my team, um, you know, a lot of, uh, respect to the work they've been putting in to, uh, prepare for this match, and, uh, hopefully we'll put on more good matches this season. Um, thanks to you guys for putting on the, the show, thanks for your patience as we, uh, figured out the server and stuff, because there were some lag issues and, uh, config issues that we were working through, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the match once it happened, and, uh, that's about it. Excited for this season. Hopefully, uh, you know, you guys are too. It's nice to be the underdog, even though I feel like I've always been one. Donovan? Uh, big shout out to Scratch. I Honestly, he was like putting in work that match, and this is like his first season on like a True. playoff caliber True. team. Like, I'm, I'm excited to see how good he's going to get this season. And, I mean, and also shout out my team. Thanks to Banny for like the shot this season. This is like the hardest I've like... This is the most like motivation I've had to play this game in like ever. So, so like really refreshing. Heather, uh, basically same as Donovan. Just like shout out my team. Just getting shout out Benny. Thanks for the shot. And yeah, this is like definitely the hardest I've tried in this game in a while. And there's a lot I have to work on to match the play style. But I'm definitely motivated to do it. And just also just shout out everyone in my mumble. How about that? Uh, yeah, I gotta give a huge shout out to my team. Everyone's putting in a lot of work, so it's really awesome to be around uh, people that are like-minded like that. And uh, shout out to Mal. They played really well. And shout out to Ashley. Yum, yum. Uh, shout out the team. Uh, GG's Mal. Shout out the production. Thank you, guys. Um, Tibby, Melon, Leonard. Shout out, shout out Cat Posse, too. And... What about you, Space? Oh, yeah, keep going. No, no that's, that's, that's it. Okay. What about you, Space? <laughs> Uh, yeah, shout out, shout out both teams playing a good match, all that good stuff. Shout out to a new season of RGL, always nice to see. Um, yeah, that's it. Yep, thanks everyone for watching. Check out the merch as always, shop.rgl.gg. I think the match tomorrow got rescheduled to Sunday. For tomorrow, I don't know if we're doing like a replacement gorilla cast or not. That's probably pending. I think we are. So if we are going to be casting a match, it's just a different match. I think it's inset gang mm -hmm. versus. Yeah, it's Inset Gang versus 20ZC, so going to be an important match. You can get to see more of uh, Jay and Zilly's team with the Witness crew and uh, another team that is playoff bubble trying to work their way in and sneak their way in. So we'll see what they're capable of, and then I think at least two casts the next week after as well. And I think Highlander is going to be starting up soon for Mondays as well. I'm not sure. I think that is, oh yeah, Dolphin said it's also next week. So a lot of TF2 starting, in, and you want to make sure you're able to catch as much as you can. But for tonight, that'll be it for us. I've been Jarrett, casting with Space Wolf with Dolphin on production. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Peace.